The first few episodes of Squid Game The Challenge are now streaming on Netflix. We have five episodes out currently, and you'll catch Chicago's own Kevin Byrne on the series. Uh, Kevin, thank you so much for your time today, and uh, congratulations, 454. Thank you, Rudy. I appreciate it. How did you get out of the show? Tell me a little bit about the process of, of being part of this, because there's over 450 contestants. Yeah, and evidently uh, 80,000 people, over 80,000 people applied. So, um, yeah, I saw a posting on Instagram from a casting guy who I had been in contact with through casting for American Ninja Warrior, and it just looked awesome. So, uh, yeah, I pulled the trigger, recorded my video, and then a series of interviews and uh, written application probably took about six or seven months or so, and then finally got the call two days before I flew out to London. 456 players. You're 454. Do you think you were probably cast like towards the end as far as the number of wise go? I think so. Yeah, they they definitely had certain people like they they chose a guy to be 456 and all of us had conspiracy theories that he knew what was going on. Um, but then one of my friends, he was also in the 450s and he got cast late. So I think maybe we were getting towards the end of the numbers because we were towards the end of the casting process. But that's just a guess. And you obviously don't know how the series is going to end or who's going to win. And if they have subsequent seasons people can kind of oh let me watch this season to see how it's going to go but did you have any idea as far as like what was going to happen did you watch squid game to say like okay or did you just try to prepare prepare yourself mentally and physically yeah i i watched squid game the first time when it originally came out and then i watched it again once i once there was a chance of me getting on this the squid game the challenge um i didn't know how much it was going to be like the original so i didn't know like do i need to practice those specific games so I was like learning to hula hoop. I was practicing jacks. I was practicing all sorts of childhood things. I did go to the park and have my husband yell at me, red light, green light. <laughs> but but there was like, I didn't go as overboard preparing as some people did. They were like making the Dalgana, the cookie shapes that you have to scrape out or lick out depending on your, your strategy. Um, so there were some people who were really, really preparing. I, I was kind of like middle of the road, I think. Let's talk, let's, let's start with our uh, red light, green light. Because it's, you know, the episodes are a little under an hour, but it's not the whole episode, but the filming was about seven hours in the, uh, in the cold. Yeah, it was red light, green light. Uh, the edit makes it look like, why are these people making such a big deal about it? Like the, the woman who said, I can't, I couldn't hold the squat anymore. No, like, of course, if you were holding a squat for 20 seconds, not a problem at all. We were holding those poses for 15 plus minutes while they would review the footage and make eliminations. So it was a whole lot longer process than what's shown on the on screen. Granted, like seven and a half hours, nobody wants to watch that red light, green light game for that long. So it makes sense to edit it down, but uh, it was tougher than it appears. And your strategy was to get that on the floor. Yeah. Once they told us that we were going to have to hold poses for a while, I thought, I, I don't want to just like slightly shift or waver or something. So I'm going to throw myself to the floor. Um, we had sensors inside our jackets, uh, motion sensors, in addition to motion sensing cameras all around the, the playing field. So I thought, all right, if I can just dive to the ground, then I'm not going to move once I'm down there. The first round, though, I only I thought I would just go to like one knee and I didn't make it all the way down and was basically holding kind of a one-legged squat. And it, I thought I was going to go out the first round and I'm like negotiating with myself, like, hold on, please, please just do this. So from there on out until the last round, I would just dive to the floor, arms like spread, forehead pressed to the floor, um, which worked for me. I made it through, but I had no visual cues. So basically like everyone else, if they were looking up, they would see that after a while, the doll would reset and the, the clock would reappear. So they knew that it was about time to start the next round. I had no visual cues. So I would just wait for the music and then try to spring to my feet and run and dive as fast as I could. There are a lot of faces that I recognize from social media that were on the season. Um, there's somebody from Survivor. There's a couple of people from different reality series, uh, some social media stars. Did you know anyone going in? Did you recognize people? Like, wait a minute, I I feel like I've seen you before. Yeah, yeah. There, um, I recognized straight away. Recognized a guy from TikTok. Um, but the best friend that I made in there, my friend Shelby, she is big on Instagram and TikTok. Um, her grandmother is her best friend, and she's recorded all these really cute videos with her. And I realized only after the fact, after I got out of the game, 
I was like, oh, Shelby, I've seen your videos. Maybe that's why I was drawn to her. But yes, lots of big personalities, lots of social media presence. Um, yeah, a, a lot of kind of people who are ready to kind of make a splash. So you make it through the, the first round. We're doing the Dalgona uh, challenge. You're going in there. It's almost the end of the episode, you know, so I'm thinking like, okay, what could possibly happen? And you have a, you have a big arc in that, you know, ep end of episode one and beginning of episode two. Yes. Yeah. When we, so we go into this all white room and we have to line up in four lines. Our assumption is that since the first game in the original series is Dalgana's, which is this cookie that you have to basically get this shape that's been pressed in it. You, you need to get that out of this round cookie. And so we, we get in line, but had no idea that we were going to be put to the test to have to decide for our line, our line of 40 something people, which shape we're going to be assigned. And there are definitely easier shapes and harder shapes. So it was a, a very fraught uh, decision and kind of argument about which line was going to get what. You have said on social media that you've done seven marathons and this was by far the hardest thing you've done. Was it that part of the challenge? Was it just the whole experience all together? Yeah, specific, like red light, green light, that was hard, like physically and mentally. I've never done so much negotiating with my body. Like, okay, just hold on. You can do this. You can do this. I'm not that self-talk type of person, but I had to do it during that game because there was not, I, I wouldn't have made it through otherwise. But then once I moved into the dorm and that was a big, like you had to get through the game to get into the dorm. And I wanted, like desperately wanted to get into the dorm. So that was kind of the goal that I had um, set for myself. That was Oh, that was awesome. Like you're walking into this like perfect recreation of the set. But then once you're in there, it's like there's not a sense of ease necessarily, because at least I didn't feel one where it was like, all right, I'd, I'd get exhausted. So I'd just sit on my bunk and then I'd feel like, oh, my gosh, I, sh I should be out there making friends, making connections. OK, I'm going to go out. And then I'd get exhausted because there's so many. I mean, when, there were 190 something people that moved into the dorm. So it's like you can't possibly be on all the time. At least I found it difficult to be on. I did make some more like kind of smaller connections, which um, made me feel more comfortable. But um, yeah, it was it was a challenging experience. I, when you hear people's, um, when they're talking, they're saying, you know, we wanted to make alliances. We wanted to just like concentrate and, and like have our own thing going on. We weren't trying to get outside influences and everyone had their own strategy. Did, did you have one? going in or did it change once you were actually you made it to the dorms yeah it's very easy to like armchair quarterback you know from home like what is that person <laughs> doing I, I would do it this way or i'd do it way better um my thought is like i make friends pretty easily pretty well so i thought all right i'm just going to try to make my kind of close connections make friends i i was not going to be out there making a scene i'm not i'm not that kind of person so if i can be a little bit more low-key but make friends, that would be, that felt kind of true to my personality. But also if I was in a position where I needed to not necessarily turn on my allies, because there's so many people, there are plenty of people that are not your allies that you could turn on much sooner than, than your friends. But if I needed to make that, of course, it's a game. And so kind of no harm, no foul. I would, I would take people out if I needed to, but, um, but yeah, it, it was kind of just, all right, let, let me be myself and hopefully attract people around me and, and, and make it through um, kind of with that approach. What was your experience like going through it and then watching it once it started to air? Like, especially, you know, some of the people like, you know, let's talk about, you know, Spencer Hawkins, 299. He's been getting a lot of airtime for, you know, his storylines as well too. And if you watch the series, I don't want to give anything away about what, what he goes through, but like, did you know him? Some of the other people where you're like, Oh, I kind of talked to this person or here's what actually was happening, you know, while you were busy doing your own thing. Yeah. Um, inside you only have such a little sliver of what you're aware of but there's so many conspiracy theories like oh they called so and so for chores so maybe they know something that's going on um and then once you get eliminated then you're like sharing stories with the other competitors and you realize oh you were the one who voted so and so out or oh you were giving those interviews because of x y and z so um yeah there were like spencer i um he seems like a great guy uh, he, I, 
I have, I have friends that have talked to him afterwards and it seems like he's enjoying the experience in the game. He was like a pretty big personality, not in an offensive way or anything, but just like when the piggy bank lowered from the ceiling, he laid down on the floor and like kind of motioned to it to come to him. Like he was, there were a lot of, like I said, big personalities. Um, and I think Spencer was one of those. Yeah, I, and I looked him up on social media, and he's on Cameo now. So if you're a, a fan of him, you you can definitely get one of those messages from uh, from Spencer. Yeah, he seems like he's doing just fine. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing great. As far as like watching the show, because you posted on social media, hey, I'm going to be part. I'm a part of this the series. You know, go ahead and check it out. And like, I was already going to watch it, but when I knew you were going to be on it, I was like, I I have to watch like ASAP. <laughs> but did you get any random messages from people like you went to school with, people in your old neighborhood, like? Anybody random that like just happened to watch it that you're like, oh my goodness, it's Kevin. Yeah, yes. Uh, there was a guy from high school who I had not talked to since what 1996. He reached out to me. I thought it was a compliment that I hadn't changed so much since high school that he still would recognize me. Uh, and then a guy who interviewed me um, back like 12 years ago for something. He reached out to me today. Uh, that he was watching and as soon as I came on the screen he recognized me these people have good memories I mean especially 12 years ago I mean that's the first time we met when you spent a month at the uh, Museum of Science and Industry that's right that's right Rudy as far as anybody else who's going into the seat you know let's just see what happens if we get a season two season three of Squid Game the Challenge what was like the best preparation for you that you said like okay here I went into this you know, I could have done this or I could have done that. Is it more like mentally prepare yourself for anything or more physically prepare yourself for anything? Yeah, I think it's more mental. Uh, yeah, because I, I was hoping like I train in ninja warrior type stuff and run races and things. I wish that it was a little bit more physical. Like I think red light, green light played to my strengths. But that but beyond there, a lot of the games are are a bit more strategic. So um I think mentally preparing yourself and just kind of becoming as Zen as possible of like, you have no idea what's going to happen. And especially watching season one, you realize they are throwing in twists and turns at every, like every moment available. So um, it's not just the games, it's everything that's happening between the games too. So just trying to be Zen about, all right, you don't know what's going to happen. So just try to roll with the punches. And then fi final thing here, as far as the tracksuit, did you know you were going to be able to, to keep it, did everybody keep theirs? How was that? How did that process go? So this is a you you two can have your track suit. This is from Amazon. We didn't get to keep them, so we um, some of us ordered some. Uh, I mean, I'm only probably going to get so many uses out of it. So like Rudy, I got to wear my track suit, right? So oh, of course, yeah, available on Amazon. It has a little number that you can choose your your favorite player to play along with. You got to bring it out for Halloween next year. That's right. That's right. And you always decorate the house so wonderfully, you know, around the holidays uh, for Halloween. So, like, maybe maybe there's a Squid Game Halloween decoration for next year. You can bring out that costume again. That's right. Some crossover event. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Kevin, it's always so wonderful to chat, up, chat with you and, and catch up. And thank you so much for your time today. Again, catch Squid Game The Challenge, now streaming on Netflix. The first couple episodes are already out. Who knows what's going to happen? There's big money at stake. Oh, yeah. let's just say you went ahead and, and won what would you have done with four point six million dollars? Yeah, um, I mean, I as much as my boss is like, you're you're not going to quit, are you? Like, well, maybe. Yeah, um, retirement. I, I think an early retirement would be pretty nice. Would be pretty nice. Awesome, Kevin. So great to see you, and uh, happy holidays to you. Thank you, Rudy. You too. Talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.